Before the Civil War, many citizens helped escaping slaves northward through the Underground Railroad. One person was Dr. Richard Eels, whose home in Quincy had been recently restored. In 1839, the Adams County Anti-Slavery Society was chartered. It was the first such organization in Illinois. During its existence, it was credited with assisting over 200 escaped slaves on their path to freedom. The vice president of that society was Dr. Richard Eels. The house was built in 1835. This is the second oldest brick house built in Quincy, and it's the, only, it's the oldest surviving brick house. Across the Mississippi River from Quincy is Missouri, which at that time was a slave state. Although Illinois was a free state, assisting escaping slaves was illegal. In August of 1842, a runaway slave from Monticello, Missouri, named Charlie, crossed the river um, probably scared to death and one way or the other wound up at the back door of Dr. Eels right here in this house. During the renovation of the home the original back door stoop was uncovered. Today visitors can stand over the same spot where Charlie waited for the next leg of his journey. So the whole idea was to get him from this place and as far away from the river as possible. They got in the carriage and they're on their way to the Mission Institute which is on 24th Street, so that's about 20 blocks from here. And at the time, that was, that was out in the country. But during the escape, a posse searching for the slave stopped at Dr. Eel's wagon. Charlie ran, but was later captured. Two days after the event, in the parlor of his home, Dr. Eel himself was arrested. From there, it went to the court, and the circuit judge at that time was Stephen Douglas, and Douglas found him guilty and finding $400. Eventually, the appeal process landed at the Illinois Supreme Court, where the verdict was upheld. In 1846, Dr. Eels died, but his case was carried on, and in the early 1850s, the case went to the U.S. Supreme Court. Representing Dr. Eels' case were William Seward and Salmon Chase, both future members of Abraham Lincoln's cabinet. Once again, the verdict was upheld. One of our board members Con McNay did some very good research and he found a microfiche copy of the news report on, on this case. One of the things in it that surprises me, at the end, when we might think that everybody in Illinois and everybody in Quincy would be anti-slavery and wanted to help the poor runaway slave, at the end of the article it says, well, why, you know, why can't these abolitionists just mind their own business, let the good people of Missouri take care of their business, and we can all get along that way. After an extensive renovation, the home had been returned to its 1835 appearance. Up in the master bedroom and back behind a couple of two by fours, we found some strips of original wallpaper. And so from that, we had it reproduced. And so the Dr. Eel's bedroom is papered with this uh, yellow and flowery paper. Today, the home stands as a reminder of one man's convictions. It's a noble, great story that, that two, two noble gentlemen, one was running for his life and just seeking what everybody wants inherently is freedom. And he's, he took great risk to do that. And then there was another side of the story where a gentleman who had a comfortable middle class life lived in a very nice home and, and wish, with his church beliefs and his heart's belief, uh, he risked everything and uh, went out on the limb and tried to help this gentleman. So it's a great story. It's a great American story. For dates and times that Dr. Richard L's home is open, call 217-223-1800.